We'll now calculate the cutoff frequencies associated with the bandpass filter. And by cutoff frequencies, we once again are going to be talking about the frequencies where the magnitude of the transfer function is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times the maximum value of the transfer function. Now, as we saw in the previous videos, the maximum value of the transfer function or not transfer function, the frequency response function, the maximum value occurs at the center frequency here. And for a passive filter, that maximum value is 1. So we're going to be looking at where the, the frequency response has a magnitude of 1 over the square root of 2 times 1, or 0 0.707. So we're looking for, as you can see, there are two frequencies that we're going to be looking for. So. To speed things along, I've written the expression for the magnitude of the frequency response, again, that we derived in the last uh, video. And I've also replaced omega with omega sub c, meaning that we're now looking for the cutoff frequencies. And at the cutoff frequency, the magnitude of the frequency response will equal 1 over the square root of 2 times h max. But as we've mentioned, h max is 1. So our goal now is to solve this thing for omega sub c. And where we've got a 1 on this side, if we can get a 1 on this side, then we can just take and equate the denominators. And to get a 1 on this side, we're going to need to factor out an r over l omega c from the denominator. And when we do that, so I factored out an r over l omega c from the denominator here which means factoring it out of the radical. So when we factor an r over l omega c out of this term, we end up with a 1 over r over l omega c. It's within the parentheses, so it's squared. And then when we factor out the r over l omega c squared from this term, we're just left with a 1. And of course, when we take it outside of the radical, the radical undoes the squaring. So now, we've got that this magnitude of h of j omega sub c is equal to that, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. And we did that so that we could cancel those things. And we now have 1 over this mess plus 1. Well, you know, 1 over this mess, which includes the radical, is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. So now we can equate, equate this side denominator with this side denominator. And we get this thing here equals the square root of 2. Now this equation is true if this term right here is equal to 1. Because if this term here equaled 1, we'd have 1 plus 1 equals 2. We'd have the square root of 2 equals the square root of 2. Or this term then equals 1. Now if we take the square root of both sides of that, we're left with 1 over LC minus omega sub C squared over R over L omega sub C is equal to plus or minus the square root, uh, plus or minus the square root of 1, which is just plus or minus 1. So we continue on now to, square, to uh, solve for omega sub c. But now we've at least got it out of the radical, and we see that we have a quadratic term in omega sub c. So our goal then is going to be to get this into a quadratic form and then um, use the quadratic formula to solve for omega sub c. So multiplying both sides of the equation by r over l omega c gives us then, multipl again, multiplying both sides by this gives us 1 over LC minus omega sub C squared equals plus or minus R over L omega sub C. So we thus have two equations. The first equation is omega sub C squared plus R over L omega sub C minus 1 over LC. And the second equation is then omega sub C squared minus r over l omega sub c minus 1 over l c. And both of those equal 0. They're not equal to each other, but well, I guess they are equal to each other. But we're crea creating two different equations, one coinciding with a positive and the other coinciding with a negative. Now we can take these two equations and plug each of them 
into the quadratic formula. Where we have then negative b, so negative r over l, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is r over l, quantity squared, plus 4 times 1 over lc, all over 2 times a, well a is just 1, and this is omega sub c is equal to that, and then using doing the same thing over here, we have omega sub c is equal to negative b, well this time b is negative so it will be a positive r over l plus or minus the square root of, now this is b squared so the minus is going to get squared in here also, so it will be positive r over l squared plus 4 over lc, again this is all divided by 2, that's a 2a over there, take times 1. Well, as we've done in the past, we're going to bring this 2 up into the numerator. That's just a 1 now. And we get then omega sub c is equal to negative r over 2l plus or minus the square root of. Now this 2 comes into the square root, the denominator of the square root, as a 4. We're going to write the first in this term. We're going to bring it inside the parentheses so that we have r over 2 l quantity squared plus now that 2 comes into the radical as a 4 in the denominator cancels the 4 there and we get plus 1 over lc on this term and over here on this one we get then omega sub c is equal to positive r over 2 l plus or minus the square root of r over 2 l quantity squared plus 1 over l c. You'll notice that we have two values of omega sub c here and two values of omega sub c here corresponding to the positive and negative radicals coming from the square root. We had two equations. Each of those equations will yield two roots. We're only looking for two values of omega sub c, the lower cutoff frequency and the upper cutoff frequency. And it turns out that if we take the positive roots on both of these, we will get the cutoff frequencies that we're looking for. Or omega sub c 1, the lower frequency, is equal to negative r over 2l plus the square root of r over 2l squared plus 1 over lc. That's our lower cutoff frequency. And the upper cutoff frequency, omega sub c 2, is equal to a positive r over 2l plus the square root of r over 2l quantity squared plus 1 over lc. It's worth looking at these for just a moment. You'll notice that in both of the expressions for omega c1, we have um, the same quadratic term or the same radical term. The uh, r over 2l quantity squared plus lc is the same in both of them. The only difference is that in this case, that radical is being has subtracted from it r over 2l. And on this cutoff frequency, the radical has added to it r over 2l. So it's this plus r over 2l and this minus r over 2l for the two cutoff frequencies.